This video on editing two inch tape is really an addendum to the prior video that I did on editing half inch tape. The procedures are really the same, but I've included a couple tips in this video to make it a little bit more bulletproof when you cut two inch tape. Editing two inch tape has some advantages in that you can solo tracks so you can hear the beat much more clearly. But the edit also transpires over a longer period of time due to the width of the tape and the angle of the cut. So you've got to be more careful. It's a little bit easier for things to sort of spill over or not match. So this video shows you a couple tips that I figured out on how to shift the edit relative to the beat to make sure your edit is clean the first time. When editing quarter inch tape, we first mark the tape by scrubbing it against the repro head so we can hear where the bead is. Now, when we take the tape out of the machine and place it in the edit block, we place it so that the 45 degree angle cut bisects our mark. Now, our mark is probably going to be slightly ahead of the beat, but even if it's right on top of the beat, this 45 degree cut actually gives a crossfade. It's about 14 milliseconds. And this 14 millisecond crossfade will smooth out the edit and make it very difficult to hear. When editing two inch tape, I've actually found that it's more reliable to cut slightly in front of the beat. The way I would do that is the same thing as quarter inch tape, mark the tape where the bead is, and when I put it in the block, I place it so the top of the cut is right where my mark is. That way it's cutting forward. But I found a way that actually you can be almost perfect every time, and that is to go through and solo the tracks. And what you're looking for is any track that anticipates the beat, which sometimes happens. Now, if you were to just mark on that track that anticipated the beat, when you go to the next edit, maybe on that take, the musician didn't anticipate as much, which would throw your timing off. So what I do is I go through and I solo all, all the tracks that appear that they could be ahead. I'll solo the kick and the snare and just see where the beat is, then any track that might be ahead of the beat. When I place it in the edit block, I slide it so that the anticipated instrument is at the top of the edit. Now I'm cutting off time. So what I want to do is mark on the edit block where I've slid this edit to. And this is actually really similar to relative grid mode in Pro Tools. So I've got my mark. I've got where the anticipation is. I've marked on the edit block how far I've pulled the edit ahead. Now on the outgoing side of the edit, Virtually everybody in this take played on the beat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark where the beat is, and there's no real anticipations. So I'm going to place it in the edit block, and I'm going to slide it back so that it matches how far off the beat I made the other cut. This way, when I cut them and place them together, the cut is actually anticipated, but the timing stays the same. It's going to be seven. Solo seven bass. Solo two. Yeah. On solo. Now just uh, solo the snare. Snare.
Eight. Or seven, uh, seven, yeah, sorry. It's a start number. Of which take? Is it nine? Uh, of the third take? Yeah, nine twenty. Nine ten. Uh, mm -hmm.
Thank you.